Welcome to ePathshala PG courses on computer science. This module will see about what is CSS which is cascading style sheets. We will look into the structure of the cascading style sheets and we will also see the different syntax that we use to develop a CSS file and to format our HTML web page. So, here we will see that CSS stands for cascading style sheets which is actually a styling language which contains a set of rules to tell browsers how our web page is going to look like. So, it actually the CSS file contains the elements which are going to be presented uh, in a web page. So, here there are three parts like cascading, style and then sheets. So, cascading refers to the procedure of writing the rules which we want to apply to a certain se section and we have more than one style rule which can be applied to the certain section. And then we have styles, style is that how our page is going to look like. We can actually set colors, fonts, alignment, borders, background, space, margins and much more to format our web page. And sheets are like templates which is a set of rules for determining how our web page is going to look like. So, this CSS consists of three parts, one is it is actually does a cascading of different styles applied to our web page and it also consists of styles which determine what style we are going to apply on a web page and sheets determine or tells us what kind of rules we are going to put on our web page to format our web page. So, basically we have seen about HTML the hypertext markup language which normally we use to develop a web page. Once we have a web page in order to display a web page in different formats or to beautify our web page we need to go for this cascading style sheet. So, CSS is actually a styling language which consists of a set of rules which tells the browser how our web page is going to look like. So, a style sheet is like a document that contains all the style information about one or more documents that is written in a markup languages and it enables to control or render different styles such as fonts, colors, margins, size and different things that can be applied to style the uh, web page. So, now we will see what is actually a style. So, style is a command which tells the browser how certain section of our web page is going to look like. So, when you write a style say for example, we can see here we have a paragraph tag, heading tag and a table tag. This actually we can use style on many HTML elements like paragraph tag, h1 tag, he heading tag or a table tag. So, the advantage of how we are going to use the CSS. Most of the browsers actually would cache the external style sheet. And once the external style sheet is cached, there is no delay in the presenting the document. And the size of the document using external style sheet is very less and hence the download time is also smaller. So, this actually speeds up the overall response time when you want to use the external style sheets. So, the advantage of using style sheets uh, is done actually the styling is done in the browser side. So, when you write an external style sheets and you try to embed in an HTML document, this is automatically cached in the client side or in the web browser and it automatically applies the styling on the web page. So, the time taken to do this is comparatively lesser and the download time is also very lesser. So, this actually speeds the overall response time when you are applying the cascading style sheets on a web page. So, how to write the style rules? So, normally when you start writing style rules there are two sections, two parts are there. One is the selector, the other one is the declaration. So, you can see here the selector is actually the HTML element to which you want to add a style. So, these, these are some of the elements given here as p tag, h1 tag and table tag. The declaration gives the statement of style you want to apply for that element. So, this declaration is made of two parts one is property and the other one is value. 
So, now you can see that this selector is the element HTML element which you want to style the declaration is the, the styling component you want to give for the element. So, this declaration is given within the parenthesis and it always ends with the semicolon. So, this declaration is of two parts one is property the other one is value. So, now we can see an example here h 1 is an element heading tag and to which you want to give a style of color which is going to be a red color. So, the property is the color and the value is the red color. And now you can see you can also have more than one property applied to an element. So, you can actually see here h 1 the color uh, is one property you have applied you want to apply to h 1 element and there is another property called background color which is also going to be applied on h 1. So, you can see that color colon that is the property colon value it ends with a semicolon and the next property is given like this background color colon green it ends with the semicolon. So, in this way you can have a list of property and value which can be applied for any HTML element. So, now you can see the different properties here we have seen that it is color you can also have different properties by which you want to change the HTML element. So, like color you can also have font margins etcetera. And the value supposing if you are using colors then you will give different color values. If it is font you can use like italic uh, italic, and then uh, you can use different font styles. And then if you are using margin it, it, it would be given in pixel values or you can give it in percentage values and it keeps on. So, you can have different properties and its own values that can take. Now, how do we put our style rules? Okay. So, once there are there are actually four ways how you attach your CSS file to a web page. So, one is you can have an inline style sheet. So, this is actually CSS is not attached in the header, but it is used directly within the HTML tags. So, you do not have a separate style sheet inline style sheet means that along with the HTML elements your styling uh, properties that is the declaration comes along with the HTML elements. Then you can also have an internal style sheet. So, this is actually a style sheet which you write within a web page and it comes in the, the head section. So, this is the best way you will control styling on one page. When you want to have an external style sheet this normally used when you want to have a different CSS file and you want to apply it to multiple pages. So, you will have a single style sheet which you will normally refer to in any HTML page externally. So, this is actually a best way to control when you want to have a style on different pages different multiple pages. There is another way you can put style rules that is imported style sheet. So, imported style sheet is you can import the CSS from other style sheets. So, we will see examples of how we are actually going to do. Now, you can see here as I told you inline style sheet will have the style information embedded along with the HTML elements or tags. Now, you can see that we are trying to put a style for the paragraph element. So, p is the paragraph element. Now, within this paragraph element p element you add a style you use the keyword called style to give the style information. So, this style equal to you give the property and the value. So, this is actually the selector and these are the declarations. So, the declaration consists of property and value. So, text align is the property and the value is center, font weight is a property the value is bold and color is a property whose value is yellow. So, you use the keyword called st style along with the HTML tag. So, in this way you can create an inline style sheet. So, this actually the, ta the text which comes within this p element would be displayed with corresponding to the styles what you have mentioned for the p tag. So, this is what called as an inline style sheet. Now, coming to the internal style sheet. So, here the style information is placed under the style tag which comes in the head section of an HTML page. So, we know that a HTML document consists of a head section and a and then it consists of the HTML part the second part. So, within this head section 
you make use of a style tag there is an element called style element style tag within which you use an attribute called type you can either give it as text or css within which you try to give your properties and values that is the css information styling information so here you say that the body the entire body is actually going to be formatted with this properties so the text aligned are going to be in left and the font family is going to be given as tribuchet verdana so now we'll see how to write an external style sheet now external style sheet is actually specified using a link tag which means that you have a different css file you store or you save a separate file called css file and you want to refer to that css file from your html document so you make use of a tag called link tag so coming here you can see it is included in the h section of an html document so within this h section you can see there is a tag called link tag whose attribute relation rel says that it is a style sheet and using this href you normally give the path where you have your style sheet the style sheet is stored with dot css extension so once you create a style sheet you can directly give the name of the style sheet if it is in the same directory or give the url where your style sheet is available and type is given as text or css so you will now refer to a style sheet that is created externally this is normally useful when you want to apply style information on multiple document so different documents get the same style style information if you are using an external style sheet now we'll see that how you have an imported style sheet so when you want to import the style sheet we use the keyword call at import so you can see here within the style tag you use the attribute symbol at and then the keyword import and then give the url so the import statement is used within the style tag in an html document and it should be the first rule whenever you use an import it should be the first rule within a style tag so within the style tag you use the keyword import at and then you can import an style sheet so let us see now how you are actually doing with an example so here whenever you use an import style sheet it normally overrides the uh, the rules that is applied in a applied for any html elements so internal rules override the conflicting rules in the imported style sheets now you can see that within the style tag imported a css file called style.css which says that the paragraph tag should take a color as green now here you can see that uh, you have the style and then you import the url with red.css and you also have url with pink.css okay so now what happens this style tag may contain an arbitrary number of import statements so it has two different import statements but the order in which the style sheets are uh, imported is actually important when you are determining when the style cascading styles are determined so the text is actually would be with pink dot css and not going to be red dot css so here you can see that the style rule makes all paragraphs green even if it is going to be even if the style dot css contains a different rule for paragraphs so you you had said that it is actually red dot it's importing a style called red dot css and it's importing another style called pink dot css okay so now what happens is you have already given it as import within the style tag this overrides the conflicting rules so now the text would be whatever text you have within the paragraph tag it would be styled with green color so it overrides the import statements what you have given in the imported style sheets so now the when you have more specific rules it gets preference over less specific rules now you can see here the paragraph tag within that you have a uh, b tag that is the text which are available in bold the color is given as green whereas the other text which are bold which is not given within a paragraph tag whose color is going to be red so now if you can see here this is what the text 
p this is the hello is within a bold tag and world is with within the paragraph tag within the bold tag which is within the paragraph tag. So, now you can see that hello would be getting a value as red because bold the text which are given within this bold tag is going to take a red color and when it is cascaded uh, here you can see the text which is within bold and the bold is within paragraph it takes a color as green color. So, now you can see how the order of cascading rules are applied. So, in order to resolve the conflicts this is the way how it is supposing you have an inline style that is given the highest importance and then if you are giving an internal style sheet then it is given the next higher importance and external style sheets it goes in the order. So, supposing for an any element if you have used an external style sheet on which if you are using an internal style sheet then this gets preference over the external style sheet and even though if you are using an internal style sheet and if you are using an inline style for some element that is along with the element you have an style sheet the style information then this inline style is what having the highest importance than any of these styles. So, the imported styles have the least importance and supposing you have not any of used any of these style sheets you have the browser's default style. So, if you are not using any of these style sheets then the browser's default style would be applied for an HTML document. Now, how does it work the CSS work? So, CSS actually works in conjunction with the HTML. So, you have a HTML file and you link that HTML file to a CSS file and whenever the browser want to display the page it refers to the CSS file and it determines how to display the elements that are defined in the HTML page. So, normally the HTML elements would also be marked with IDs and classes and these IDs and classes can be referred in a CSS file and the browser would refer to the HTML element using these IDs and classes and apply the corresponding styles. So, we will see later with an example how we use the IDs and classes. Now, the difference actually the difference between the ID and the classes. So, they work in the same way, but they provide the same functionality to an HTML element, but IDs should be unique whereas, classes are not unique. So, each element should have a unique ID so that you can refer to the element using that ID in that page whereas, classes are not unique and an element can have multiple classes and multiple elements can also have the same can have the same class. So, here the IDs are actually used to style the element. So, given any element you will also have an ID for that HTML element. In the CSS file you use that ID to give the styling components or styling information and classes are also used in the same way. But classes once you define you can apply the classes to multiple elements to in the same page. What does the CSS file look like? So, the styles for each element whether it is uh, ID or class that is used on a HTML page are going to be defined in a CSS document and in a HTML document you have different elements. The styles for the uh, elements would be actually wrapped within the curly braces. So, you can see here this is a HTML element H1 within curly braces you wrap the styling information of the all the elements uh, that has the H1 tag. So, IDs are normally declared with a pound sign. So, you can see a hash symbol. So, here you can see that hash title and the ID name normally are declared with a pound sign and the ID name this is the title is the name of the ID and the styles for the ID is also put within this curly braces and classes are normally defined with a period. So, you can see if it is a dot given before the name of the uh, element then it is actually a class name. So, classes are declared with the period symbol and then the name of the class again the styles are wrapped within the curly braces. So, this is how you give the style information for any of the element defined in your HTML page. Now, how does the anatomy of a style rule looks like? So, as I told you you have the selector and this is what the declarations. So, within the selector 
you have uh, the selector starts with the curly braces and within this curly braces you have the declarations of different styles or properties and each holding a value that is um, preceded by a colon. So, the selector actually specifies the HTML elements that are going to be affected by the style rules and the declaration specifies what is the style rule you want to apply for the element. So, now you can also actually group the selectors. So, you can see here uh, you have a h1 tag h1 element and this is one style information h1 tag is also going to take another style information h1 tag is also going to take another style information. So, you have different declarations for the same selector or same element which you can group it like this. So, h1 tag within the curly braces you can group the three declaration into one single style information. So, for any element that is enclosed within a h1 tag would take the three properties the three properties what we have mentioned here. So, you can group selectors and then uh, this is actually a different example where you can see here different selectors having common declarations. So, h1 is one selector, h2 is another selector and h3 is another selector. h1 takes the property color red, h2 also takes the same declaration, h3 also takes the same declaration. Now, what you can do is you can actually group the selectors in this way h1 comma h2 comma h3 all the three selectors taking the same declaration as color colon red. Now, you can also have type selectors. So, type selectors are simple selector which is actually the name of a document element and it matches with every single element of the document. So, now you can see the selector B selects every B element. Universal selector is actually you do not specify the name of the element. So, you make use of a special selector like star it is a wild card which matches with every element in the document. So, now you can see that you put a star within which you place the declaration as color red. So, it actually makes the entire text in the document with the red color. Now, we can also have compound selectors. So, compound selectors actually selectors which are defined uh, within one another. So, you, you can have uh, selectors defined so that a style rule applies to an element only when it is a descendant of another element. Say for example, you have an ul tag and then you have uh, this is an unordered list ul and then there is another ul which means that all the unordered list within this ul will get the style information. So, in this way you can say that only the descendants of this ul is actually going to get this style information. So, and similarly you can see another example h1 em and then em which means that h1 is a heading tag emphasized and then emphasized. So, th those text values that comes within this h1 and within em and within em is what going to be colored as red color. So, here you can see that compound selectors are more uh, very specific than simple selectors. You specifically say that to which tag when tags are embedded within one another you say that which uh, to which element you want to actually apply the styling. So, now you can see that p means all the text that comes within this paragraph tag will get the style information whereas, div and then a p then you give a uh, style information which specifically says that within this div tag within this p tag the text that comes will take this color as blue. Now, the descendants selectors actually selects only those elements that are descendants of a particular element. So, now you can see here this example. So, there is a div tag there is a bold tag and then you say that c actually you want to make it as bold. Then cascading the rest of the characters are here and then you have a style sheet the keyword style sheet. So, s has to be in bold that is what you, you say that s is within embedded within this b tag then the rest of the characters and then again sheet the first character you want to make it bold. So, this is what the text okay. and now you say here uh, similarly you have the other things descendant which is actually within the paragraph tag and selector is what you want to make it bold. So, to select all the b elements which are descendants of the i element. 
So, you want to select all the bold elements which are dissonance of the i element. So, within i you have a text which is given as bold. So, in order to use this you can give it like this you can define the selector to be like this. So, you take the text which is within the paragraph tag within the i tag and within the bold tag. So, those text that appears within embedded within these three things are actually getting the style information. So, in this way you can specify the descendant selectors. Now, you can also have child selectors. Child selectors would select the elements that are immediate children of a specified element. So, now you can see here this is a text given. So, it is paragraph tag within which you have a bold tag and then you have an i tag within which you have again an bold tag then the paragraph closes. So, now you can say that the selector p and use the greater than symbol uh, b. So, this selects only the highlighted b elements. So, you can see that within paragraph within uh, paragraph you have bold tag. So, it, this selector would select only those this highlighted which is given here it is highlighted as bold. So, this is what is this what would be given the uh, style the selector p then i and then b this would select the uh, element that is actually within this paragraph within this i within this b. So, it actually selects this paragraph the text called paragraph. So, it takes the text that is embedded within the bold tag which is, a pa which is actually i is the parent of this b tag and p is the parent of this i tag. So, in this way you can also specify the child selectors. Now, style classes you can define classes as I told you whenever you want to have a class then you have to define the class with the period preceding it. So, this actually allows us to control the elements of a given style you use to uh, style ma many uh, multiple uh, elements that is uh, the same class can be applied to multiple elements. So, this actually you can see here you have defined the class call uh, node X and this is going to be defined for an anchor tag. So, if you are very specific about to which element you want to define this class then you can give the name of the class. So, the selector defines the class name and then uh, the name of the class is node X which is actually preceded by the class name preceded by a period. So, uh, to the anchor tag you want to apply the class call node X you give the style information. So, this actually you can see here use in the anchor tag you uh, specify the name of the class. So, within the anchor tag you say you use the keyword called class and you give the name of the classes node X and then you refer uh, this style information to an HTML page. So, in this way you can apply style classes and then style classes can also be generic that is it is not tied to specific element type. So, you can if you are not specific to any element type you put a period and then you can give the name of the class and within this uh, emphasized text you give you say that the class name equal to uh, the name of the you specify the name of the class and you have given the text. So, this text would actually get the uh, style that you have defined as uh, this class name and the span and the div tag. So, uh, this is actually very useful when you are using the cascading style sheet. So, span tag defines an inline structure. So, whenever you simply want to apply for a stretch that is if you want to apply for a chunk of it then you can make a span tag to which you can apply the style information div tag also defines a block structure and usually you place the line of breaks before or after this element. So, you can have an effect on this chunk when you use an div. So, in this way you can actually use the styling information. So, here uh, there are pseudo classes that are also available in the cascading style sheets. So, it is actually preceded by a colon and it is not used with the affected tag because it is in HTML it is not used because it is implied. So, here you can see the general form of the pseudo classes and elements take like this. So, the selector then colon the pseudo class and then the declaration. 
So, you have different support for pseudo classes like first child, last child, only child, these are different classes. So, you give the name of the element and then specify the pseudo class name, apply the style information. So, the first child within the paragraph all the p elements selects all p elements that are the first children of any element to which you want to apply the style element. So, you have similarly the anchor pseudo classes. So, you have a pseudo class called colon link and colon visited. So, here you can see that anchor colon link to which you want to apply this style and then anchor colon visited to which you want to apply this style. And you also have dynamic pseudo classes when you do some action on those elements it gets the style information. So, the anchor tag in which you will actually uh, you make a focus by making some keyboard events or other means that would actually get this color information. So, these are dynamic pseudo classes and if you hover your mouse over the uh, anchor tag then that color would change and any of the active tags would actually get a different color like this. So, these are the dynamic pseudo classes and you have a first line pseudo element that allows to add styles to the first line of an element. So, if it is a paragraph tag the first line of a paragraph tag would get this style information. Similarly, you have a pseudo class called first letter. So, the first letter of a first line of a paragraph tag would get this style information. So, these are different examples how you actually use this uh, paragraph tag the first line pseudo class and the output is given and before and after or other pseudo elements and the example is also given here and you have attribute selectors. So, in this model we have actually uh, explained about the cascading style sheets. We have seen how to add different style sheets to a HTML document and we have also seen about the anatomy of how we write the style rules. And the module also we have discussed or explored about the different selectors and we have seen about uh, group selectors, compound selectors and uh, the other kinds of selectors. We have seen about the pseudo classes and different elements we can use in the CSS to format our HTML document. Thank you.